So first, we're just going to be using the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Moisturizer and then the Peach and Lily Gloss Refining Serum. And I'm having Gabby put it on her own face because I'm sick and I don't want to get her sick or make her break out. And this is Gabby's favorite moisturizer, so I just had her use the one that her skin is used to. And she said it was cold, so that's why she's making that face. And then she's just going to go in with the Peach and Lily Serum. Again, this is my favorite serum. I love this. It makes a huge difference on your face. If you are willing to spend a little more, you should definitely use this. I use this instead of primer most of the time. And I've noticed such a big difference in my face. It brightens your skin and just makes your skin feel so amazing. Today for foundation, we're going to be using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation in the shade Morning Nude. And this is a very full coverage foundation, which is the kind of foundation that you want to use for this look. Because, okay. You want to use a sponge because a sponge gives you more full coverage. And you want to blend from the center of the face out. And don't forget to blend into the hairline and, of course, down your neck to get an even coverage. Now we're going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. This is my favorite concealer because it's very full coverage and it blends so easily. And I like to use the dot method because the triangle method I have found is too heavy on my face and it's also a little heavy for Gabby's face so she uses the dot method as well. And you want to blend the part that you want the most coverage which tends to be your under eyes last. And Gabby has really sensitive eyes, so it's really hard for me to get as close to her waterline as I can. And you want your under eyes to be as fully covered as possible. So I just put a little more concealer and I'm just having her do it so that her eyes don't water because they do that a lot. <laughs> And then for setting powder, of course, we're using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Trans Translucent <laughs> Setting Powder. And I'm using a brush to set her under eyes today because she has sensitive eyes, so the sponge, the tapping tends to irritate her eyes. And you want to do baking first wherever you crease the most, which is your under eyes, or if you get forehead lines or smile lines, things like that, you want to bake those and set those first. And then after that has been sitting on the skin for enough time for Gabby to eat a snack, <laughs> go ahead and dust it off and make sure it doesn't stay on there for any longer than about five minutes because it can cause flashback, which means it doesn't set into the foundation. It just sits on top of your face and it can make you look, um, I guess flaky is a good way to explain it. And then you want to take that setting powder and tap it into the rest of the face. You don't want to do a swiping motion until the face is covered if you must because it'll move the foundation around and you want to set it in place, not move it. And then just to add a little color to her eyelids, this is the Nature Glow Artistry Palette by Morphe. And this is the matte and the shimmer one. I believe they have an all matte or an all shimmer. But you can still get this at Ulta, I'm pretty sure. But I'm just taking a big fluffy brush and dusting that shade that I showed you over her whole entire eyelid just to give it some definition so that her eyes don't look flat. So now using the James Charles Morphe palette, I'm taking that true black shade and then that deep brown shade above it. And you're gonna wanna get a card, a piece of paper, or I think they even have like makeup tape it's called. I'm not really sure. But you just want this so that you can create a dramatic smoked out wing. And the point of this is so that you don't get fallout and you can create that super clean line. And I'm just going in with the pencil brush and that deep black shade first. And then afterwards, I will smoke that out with the brown shade. And you can do this. 
this as big or as small as you would like to. But we're doing an evil queen look. I'm not sure if I said that, but that's what we're doing. So I wanted this to be pretty dramatic and don't be afraid to make it messy. It doesn't need to look perfect. You want it to look scary because she's supposed to be evil, you know? Hate to be the one that told you so You just crossed the line You run out of time And then after you are done and you have the wings to your liking You're going to want to take the same exact shades using the black shade first I think I just poked her in the eye Oops Sorry Gabby <laughs> You just want to smoke out the lower sorry, lash line using those sorry. same exact colors and then take that card, tape, paper, whatever you want to use again and then hold it at an angle so that you can connect to them to bring them into one big solid together wing. I hope that made sense, but I mean, you can see. You get the point. I hope you get the point. And then if there's any fallout or any smudges, you're going to want to fix those with a sponge or a brush to wipe them away because you don't want that black to smudge all over the face. You want to keep it controlled but still messy. And the black got a little on her face and smudged a little bit. So an easy fix, even if you already put powder on, you can just put a few dots of concealer and just blend it up to fix that and then just reset it with powder. And then we're going to be using the Morphe Eyebrow Pencil in the shade Biscotti. If you can, if you have any eyebrow products, try and make the eyebrow a little bit darker than you normally would. A little more dramatic, a little more messy, less clean, so that it gives you like the more crazy Halloween vibes. Ew, I said that cringy, but you get the point. faced matte bronzer in the shade chocolate soleil this smells so good and it blends so perfectly if you're looking for a new bronzer to use just as an everyday bronzer i would highly recommend this one because it blends so smoothly and you're just going to want to draw a line with a big fluffy brush from the jawline up to the hairline and then basically just outline your face and you want this to be darker than you would normally do it because you want it to look pretty dramatic so you're going to want to blend up all the way to the hairline and around the face to frame it. And then to give her more psycho vibes because she is the evil queen, I'm going to take a different fluffy brush and go in with that really deep brown shade and a little bit of that red to mix them together and just kind of bronze her with that as well to make her look more, um, I guess, royal and more Halloween-y. I don't really know how else to explain it. Like, the royalty, they didn't do makeup normal and you want her to look evil, so just do it. <laughs> And don't be afraid to literally bronze and contour everything. You want this look to look as, <laughs> look to look, <laughs> oh my gosh. You want this to look as dramatic as possible because she's the evil queen again. I don't know how many times I've said that now, you probably understand, but you want her to look like evil, so yeah. And again, Gabby has extremely sensitive eyes and I didn't want her to cry off the whole look. So I just had her put on her own eyelashes and she just used some lashes from Glamify Me. I don't know if everybody has a Glamify Me near them, but they do have an Instagram that you can follow them on. And the teal scrunchie did not go with the look, so I'm just changing her big braid to the brown scrunchie to go more with the vibes.
piece right here, medallion, I guess, I don't know, dramatic necklace, is not mine. It's actually from my friend's Halloween costume, but to complete this look, you can just put on any clothes that you have that look fancy. You don't have to go out and buy an expensive costume. And then any dramatic necklace, anything that you have that you can just dress up and throw together like we did. And then I forgot what the name of this highlighter is, but it's from Morphe and it's a deep bronzed color. You want to use a highlighter that's not very light like you would normally use. You want to use something pretty deep and if you don't have anything like that, you can set an eyeshadow under it to deepen it up. But you don't want it to be like glittery and in your face. You want it to look very deep, if that makes sense. I don't know if I explained that well, but you want it to be a darker one. Like if you have a sparkly bronzer, you can use something like that, but you don't want it to be like all girly and feminine. You want it to be really dark and mysterious. Ooh, that was a good explanation. There you go. So for this next part, you're going to want to grab a lip liner pencil, preferably the darkest color that you can find. If you don't have a lip liner, you can also use an eyeliner pencil. I didn't have either of those because I was clearly unprepared for this portion of the video. So I just have her using a matte lip crayon, which you can also use. But if you don't have that or you prefer to not use any of these products, that's totally fine. You don't have to, it's not necessary. It just makes a cleaner line and it helps the lipstick stay in place. So after you're all done with that, you're going to want to take the darkest lipstick that you can find and just go over the lip liner that you did or if you didn't do it that way, just outline your lips and then fill it in. And preferably you'd want this to be a matte lipstick because you're going for like the baddie look, not the nice girl flirty look, you know? take that same highlighter that you used before and highlight the inner corners of your eyes and then I think I put more on the button of her nose I don't remember if I showed that before but you definitely want that to be highlighted as well the brow bone and the cupid's bow And then you don't have to do this part, it's completely optional up to you, but we're just throwing a black backdrop over the white, um, I can't remember what it's called, Gabby's told me a hundred times, but I just continue to call it the foldy thing, so that's what we're gonna call it, the foldy thing. And then we're just replacing the wooden chair with a more medieval looking chair, and again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. It's more for like videos, photos, if you're gonna do stuff like that. It just helps to go along with the vibe more than the nice little white background. Cause we're trying to look bad, you know, like bad to the core. I mean, bad, is that how you say it? I don't know, bad to the bone, psychotic, you know? We're not trying to look sweet here. We're trying to look like, be afraid, uh, yeah. You get it. <laughs> So after I did this, I realized that it looked more like um, Vampire Diaries vibes, like when they smell blood or whatever and they get like the pulsing veins under their eyes. That wasn't my intentions. If you've ever watched the Snow White and the Huntsman, Charlize Theorem, I think that's her name, she is the baddest queen out there. Like she was so good in that movie and she's got magic powers, like she's so good and she just she does the evil queen perfectly so that's what inspired this whole part like was to make her look more like 
psycho vibes because ugh, I watched that movie and it's so perfect. So watch that and then yeah, you'll see where I got the idea from. So this was to make her look more crazy, not really like bloodthirsty, okay? So. I, I realized that I forgot to explain what I'm doing. <laughs> so you're gonna wanna take the dark brown shade from the James Charles palette and also that deep purple shade not the sparkly one there is a sparkly one and a matte one you want the matte one and i mean true purple not the fuchsia nothing like the most purple shade you can find and you just want to draw little squiggly lines from the eyelash line down as far down as you want it it doesn't really matter i just went to the cheekbone and that was as far as i went after you draw the brown you're going to want to smudge it out a little bit with your finger and then you're going to want to go in next to it with the purple to kind of look like it's like pulsing so yeah that's how i did it and it doesn't matter what brush you use just a small little brush um the more stiff the brush is the better you don't want it to be too loose because then it'll just throw it everywhere it won't really make little lines so you want it to be pretty controlled for this part and then i just took the sponge i didn't put anything else on it I just grabbed the sponge and I lightly tapped over it so that it would look like the eyeshadow was under her skin. You don't want to cover it, you just want to take the excess. Now on to the fun part. So we did get fake blood, but it stained so bad I put it on my finger and it would not come off for anything. So we did not want to put that on her face, so we were trying to find something a little safer to put on her face, and we found writing icing. So it's basically food colored icing, I guess, but it ran down her face really well and it was safe. I mean, it's not really meant for your face, but it was a lot safer than the fake blood that we got because the fake blood was like a dollar and it did not work and it was not gonna be safe for her face. So we just used writing icing and you just wanna drip it and then it'll run down your face. And you can get makeup, you can pretty much use whatever you want. Just please, whatever you get, make sure that it is safe for your skin. Always do a test patch first. You don't wanna irritate your skin or have a mishap. So whatever you use, just please, please, please make sure that it is safe for your skin because everybody is different. And that is the finished look. I hope that you guys really like this. If you try it out, remember to tag us on Instagram so that we can see it. And always remember to post your ideas in the comment box below. And that's going to be it for today. So love you guys. Bye. You should see me in a crowd. Your silence is my favorite sound. Watch me make a bow.